Hello students, it's your professor Dr. Mink and welcome to uh, the first lecture for chapter 4 where we will discuss making decisions also uh, referred to as logical branching. As I've done in the past, chapter 4 will be covered over a two-week period and we will most likely get through um, 4.6 in this first lecture. Uh, I try to keep the length of the lectures um, uh, to be comparable. So one is not real long and one is, is significantly shorter. So we're going to cover the decision structure, okay? And the primary branching structure we will discuss is the if-then statement and then we will add a false component if then else and then if then else if which is a nested branch um, uh, we'll cover all the logical <clears throat> excuse me all the logical operators and or not etc and that should wrap it up for the first lecture of two for chapter four let's get started any decision structure in a programming language gives us the ability to deviate from a linear flow of control. Up until this point, everything has been uh, linear. Uh, the line 14 was always executed after line 13 and before line 15. You'll see with the introduction of decision structures, that will change. In chapter four, we will cover the branch, and in the next chapter, we will cover the loop, which are two um, decision structures, um, alternate flow of control structures. As I mentioned in the previous slide, thus far, all of our code has been executed sequentially. <clears throat> um, however, in order to write programs that are meaningful, we need multiple paths of execution. We need decision points. So if a certain condition is true, do th go this path. And if it's false, go a different path. And um, the first branching structure that, that we always cover in every programming language I've ever used or taught is if-then logic. And I will tell you, you've all used if-then logic. It's the nucleus of human cognition, okay? Even as you're walking down the sidewalk, okay? Consciously or subconsciously, you're making an if-then decision every time you take a step. If the condition you expect is true, which means the sidewalk continues and there's no ice and there's no holes, and yeah, you, then you take a step. If the condition is false, there's a hole there or there's a big piece of ice, then you alter your path. So humans consciously and subconsciously make thousands of if-then logic decisions every day. Here's an example of a decision structure uh, for uh, a decision we've all made. Uh, is it cold outside? Um, I would I would state that differently. I typically use uh, uh, somewhere around a 40 degree temperature. If it's less than 40 degrees out, true, wear a coat. If that statement's false, don't wear a coat. Um, and we'll be talking about how we evaluate that condition and how we state the condition. Uh, we'll be using Boolean terms, but we'll get there. On to section 4.2, which is the formal presentation of the if-then statement, the uh, most basic logical condition or branching mechanism in a programming language. Here we have the syntax for an if-then statement. You have if, you have an expression, that's the condition, that's the Boolean condition, and we're going to talk about that in detail. 
um, shortly. So if and then are keywords. The statement or statements are called the body of that if then condition. Okay. If this condition is true, then execute one or more statements in between the if and the end if. If the expression is false, we skip over the body of the if. So we would then go to the first line after end if. Usually, the Boolean condition is formatted using a relational operator. And we've all seen these relational operators before. Uh, they determine if a specific or one or more specific values are um, greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So in the example I gave about wanting to wear a coat or whether or not I would wear a coat, let's just say if the temperature was less than or equal to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I would wear a coat. That would be less than, uh, temperature less than or equal to 40 would be the Boolean condition and that's either true or false, okay? If it's 39 degrees, it's true. If it's 52 degrees, it's false. Relational operators are binary operators, which means they have two operands. You know, for example, length greater than width. Is, length greater than, is the value stored in the variable length greater than the var variable value stored in the variable width. So you have two variables or two operands. In the second example, you have one variable and one value. Okay, is size less than or equal to 10? The example I used in the previous slide, temperature less than or equal to 40. A Boolean expression is an expression that evaluates to one or two, one of two results and that is true or false a boolean expression can only by definition yield true or false here we see a coded or two coded examples of if then statements <clears throat> the first has a single statement as its body if the value stored in DEC sales, DEC sales, is greater than 50,000, then message box show, you've earned a bonus. It will display that text message on the screen using message box show. And if the second example, which is um, an elaborated version of the first, if DES sales greater than 50,000, then execute those three lines message box show you've earned a bonus set uh, assign the value 0 0.12 to desk commission rate the variable desk commission rate and then set int days off or assign int days off the value int days off plus one so increment days off by one and then end if now, obviously, if in either of these decimal sales greater than 50,000 is false, so decimal sales at 49,000, then the body of the condition is skipped. Here we have <clears throat> some rules. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we have some rules you need to remember when using if then statements. The if and the then keywords must be on the same line and only a comment may follow the then. So you could put an explanation of the if then on the same line with a comment, but nothing else um, after then. The end if must be on a separate line and only a comment may follow the end if. I'd like you to stop this uh, lecture now 
and go to the timeline, I've uh, placed a video of tutorial 4-1 uh, running, and I've explained it in great detail. Uh, it has an if-then statement, and you'll see it running, and I would like you to complete tutorial 4-1 on your own. So go see that and then come back. Thanks. You'll notice that the body of the branch of the if then statement is indented. This is not necessary, but it's done automatically with the Visual Basic Editor as a, um, as a style convention. And uh, it makes the program so much easier to read if the body of a loop or the body of a branch is indented. So that's not required, but highly encouraged for style. Now we come to a topic that's um, rather important to me, and that's um, order of operations. And if you remember PEMDAS for arithmetic operations, um, uh, parentheses trump all other order of operations. So Matt, in this particular example, the, it, it demonstrates how math operators are evaluated before the relational operator. So if int x plus int y is greater than int a minus int b, then if that's true, that entire statement is true, int x plus int y is resolved first, int a minus int b is then resolved second, and then the result of those two arithmetic operations are evaluated to see if the first is greater than the second. If that's true, then it is true as printed um, to label message.txt, or it's, it's, it's displayed. Um, I encourage students in every programming class I teach, regardless of the language, to use parentheses to take control of the order of operations. Um, I'm not good at remembering rules like PEMDAS, so I use parentheses. And th then there's no doubt as to what will, be, uh, what will be resolved first. So here's the same arithmetic, uh, I'm sorry, the same Boolean condition with parentheses. You can use function calls with the relational operators. Uh, so either or both uh, relational operator operands may be function calls. And so here's an example of what we mean by this. Okay, the first operand in the in the two operands evaluated evaluated with the less than operand operator. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's a lot to say. <laughs> if C int text input dot text, so we're sending text input dot text to the convert int function. So it's going to take what's in that text box, convert it to an integer, and then return that value. If that's less than 100, then label message dot text, it is true. So you can't put a text value in a less than expression, okay? Um, well, you, you actually can, but I don't want to get into that now, but it's not going to work arithmetically until it's converted to an int. We also have a variable data type that is Boolean. We can declare a variable as a Boolean and it will hold either true or false. And so, and we can use it in an assignment statement. Um, we can assign it true or false um, based upon a certain condition, but we can also use the Boolean variable <clears throat> as the expression, as a Boolean expression without, <clears throat> excuse me, without any um, comparative operators. We don't need to say greater than, less than, equal to. So here's the example. We have a Boolean quota met 
which holds the value true or false. So if Boolean met, then you have met your sales goal. So if it is has been assigned the value true, then that label uh, label message will contain you have met your sales quota. If not, this whole body will be skipped, or that label message text assignment statement will be skipped. Up until now, we've only discussed if then. If a certain condition is true, then do this. If not, just keep going. Skip over uh, the end if and keep going. Well, now we have if a certain condition is true, do A, let's say, right? Else, if it's false, do B. And let's take a look. Here we have the, the syntax for <clears throat> if then else. And so we have the expression. If the expression is true, then we execute those first statements in between if and else. However, if the expression evaluates to false, we execute the statements after else and before end if. So we have a true branch, a two way branch in this particular example. Here's a flow chart showing if then else and the code associated with this uh, two way branch. So if temperature is less than 40, okay, we're going to actually, it's not code, it's pseudo code. Sorry about that. If the temperature, double temperature, less than 40, okay, if that value, if that expression is true, in other words, if the value stored in double temperature is less than 40, we'll display a message, a little cold, isn't it? If that is false, meaning double temperature is greater than 40, we'll display the message, nice, we nice weather we're having. The if then else provides two mutually exclusive branches, okay? The condition um, will be true or false. That, that's a Boolean uh, condition, has to be true or false. So either the then clause or the else clause will be executed, okay? Um, I'm gonna post a video, or I have posted a video for tutorial 4-2, which contains an example of the if then else uh, statement. So you might wanna pause here and take a look at that and then come back to this lecture. Thanks. Up next is the content from 4.4, the if then else if statement. We're going to add a second condition. Let's take a look. With the if then else if statement, we can add additional choices or additional uh, Boolean conditions. Here's some pseudocode. If it is very cold, then wear a coat. Else, if it is chilly, wear a light jacket. Else, if it is windy. Else, if it is hot. Blah, blah, blah. Now, is very cold, is chilly, is windy, is hot. Those need to be presented as a Boolean condition. So, uh, we'll talk about that, but those need to be expressed in a statement that can be evaluated as true or false. So instead of very cold, it might be if the temperature is less than you know, 30 degrees. That's a Boolean expression. Uh, you can't just say very cold, obviously. Each of the conditions is evaluated in the sequence in which they're listed. And as soon as one of the conditions is true, the remaining conditions are ignored. They're not evaluated. So the order of the conditions is critical, okay? Uh, the wrong order can result in a wrong decision, which would be called a logic error, okay? You know, and you have to consider what if it is chilly and windy? If windy is tested before chilly, you go out with a windbreaker when you need a jacket. So um, 
the condition and structure of the conditions uh, um, is very, very important. Here we have the syntax of if then, else if. It's um, similar, uh, but an expansion upon um, if then, else. You have your if, your expression, then that's evaluated first. If that is false we go to the first else and you can add an if else if and a new expression and you can continue to add else if expressions and you would have an else as the final um, statement that's executed if everything else is um, false and of course your end if at the end Here's a flow chart for those series of uh, if then else statements, else if statements. If it's very cold, if that's true, uh, wear a jacket and we're done. If that's false, evaluate if it's chilly, uh, true, wear a light jacket, false, false. And you could continue to string these along. You can have an else with no condition at the end or just end it. You don't have to have an else. You can have um, a series of conditions. If none of them are met, then the entire thing is skipped. Here's an example, a coded example, that illustrates why the order that the conditions are evaluated or presented is so important. So let's just take um, an example. Let's say the average double average contains the value um, 85 okay if 85 less than 60 that's false false else if 85 less than 70 that's false else if 85 less than 80 that's false else if 85 less than 90 that's true then your label grade dot text gets a B and we're done think about if we ordered these in the reverse order okay the first one 85 if um, double average less than 100 well it would be true and everyone would get an a so um, you would need to um, structure something like this so that um, they're mutually exclusive and that they're they're um, presented in the order that will work for the logic that would be a logic error if we had these um, conditions in the uh, opposite order reverse order i should say here's a variation of the code from the previous example except we left out else we just used if then statements does this code function correctly well let's let's take a look um let's say the average is 50 okay if double average less than 60 that's true label grade dot text gets an f and if then we'll hit another if double average less than 70 that's true then the text property of label grade gets a d if double average less than 80, that's true again. Then we get a C. As you can see, having else if, which makes them mutually exclusive, and will skip the others once it finds it true, is um, a necessary uh, component for this logic statement, or for this evaluation. I mentioned earlier that you can put an else, but it's not necessary as the final statement without a condition. And that catches any value that fails um, all of the other tests. Because if all the other tests are false, you're going to get, in this particular coded example, you're going to get an invalid score in the text property of label grade. Okay, And that's called a trailing else. Next up is the content from section 4.5, which is nested if statements and if statement within an if statement. I know. Calm down, we're going to cover this. <laughs> it sounds confusing, but it, it really isn't. Any valid programming statement can be used 
uh, as the body of an if-then-else or else-if statement. And this includes another if statement within the body of is if then I'm sorry if then else or else if um, this creates a more complex decision structure called a nested if tutorial 4-4 demonstrates the use the use of nested if statements um, it's a loan application, and the customer must meet one of the following qualifications. They must earn $30,000 per year or more and have worked in his or her current job for more than two years or have worked at his or her current job for more than five years. And I'd like you to stop viewing this audio lecture right now, go over to the timeline, and review the video for tutorial 4-4 and you should really work through that tutorial on your own. The only way to learn how to code is to code. This slide illustrates the nesting. Uh, you can see the nested or inner if then else statements are surrounded by a box. And then the outside if else statement is outside of those inner boxes, but surrounded by the larger box. So if double greater than 30,000, then else and if is its own if else statement. If that is true, double salary greater than 30, we drop down into the first if int years on the job greater than two else and if statement that is skipped if double salary greater than 30,000 is false then we go to the else statement and we evaluate in years if in years on job greater than five I do a pretty detailed explanation of this with the code all the code in the video for 4-4 so take a look at that and here is a flow chart of that nested if statement or the nested if statements I should say um, that shows you the first condition salary in the outer loop I'm sorry the outer if then else salary greater than 30,000 it's true it drops down into the inner loop I'm, I'm sorry I got loops on the mind I was just uh, teaching C++ loops yesterday um, the inner condition inner if then else years at the job greater than two blah, blah. and if the outer outer if then else statement is false you drop down to the second nested if next up is the content from chapter uh, four section six this will be the last section covered in this lecture and we'll finish chapter four uh, next week uh, 4.6 deals with logical operators which are used to link multiple Boolean expressions. So let's get started. When you combine multiple Boolean expressions into a single expression that is ultimately evaluated to true or false, it's called a compound expression. And here are the operators that we use. And combines two expressions into a compound one compound expression both the first and the second must be true for the overall expression to be true or also combines two boolean expressions into one compound expression and only one of them or both of them must be true for the overall expression to be true x or exclusive or combines two expressions into one one expression, not both, must be true for the overall expression to be true. It's a slight difference from or. It's exclusive or. Not reverses the logic of an expression, makes a true expression false and a false expression true. Let's take a closer look at some of these. First up is the AND operator. As I mentioned in the previous slide, AND operator 
combines two expressions into one compound Boolean expression. Here's a coded example of an if statement that uses the AND operator. So if there's the first condition, I'm sorry, expression, Boolean expression, if in temperature less than 20 and in minutes greater than 12, then so if one of those is true and the other is false, the entire thing becomes false. Below is what's called the truth table for the AND operator. Expression one, true. Expression two, false. Compound expression is false. Expression one, false. Expression two, true, false. False, false, false. Only way you get a true with a compound expression including and is if both Boolean expressions are true. In some instances, you want the first false to stop processing of the rest of the values. The one example that comes to mind is if you have a divide by zero or if you have a denominator variable and you check first that it's greater than zero or not equal to zero, if that goes false, you don't want to evaluate the other expression. So we have what's called and also. When using the AND operator, if the first expression is false, then the entire expression will be false. We know that. So if there's no need to evaluate the second expression, it can be skipped using a method called short circuit evaluation. And you use the AND also operator to achieve short circuit evaluation. Let's take a closer look. In this example, okay, if the first expression, Boolean expression, if double x greater than zero, if that is false, and also dictates the use of short circuit evaluation, and double x is not passed to the function check value. It's not even evaluated, because double x, I don't know, let's say double x gets, uh, becomes the denominator. Um, you don't want, if it's equal to zero, you don't want that Evaluate it because you'll get a runtime error. We'll, we'll talk about runtime errors later. The OR operator works just like AND, except it is um, much easier to get a true. 75% of the time you'll get a true, whereas 25% of the time you'll get a true with two, uh, evaluate, uh, two expressions linked with AND. So in this case, if in temperature less than 20 or in temperature greater than 100, then the temperature is in the danger zone. There's the truth table. So just one of expression one or two being true yields a true. So 75% or three out of four times you get a true with or. And as you might have guessed, we have or else. For short circuit evaluation, when using the OR operator, if the first expression is true, then we know the entire expression will be true and there's no need to evaluate the second expression. It can be skipped using short circuit evaluation with the OR ELSE operator in place of OR. And here's an example of OR ELSE. The following example, if double X is equal to zero or return to true, we know the compound statement is going to be true because you only need one true with an or. So we have or else, and it doesn't pass check value, um, doesn't pass double X to check value. It's ignored. The exclusive or also combines two expressions into one compound expression. And here's an example. If that's total greater than 1,000, X or decimal average greater than 120. Okay, so look at the truth table. If one is true and one is false, you get true. If one is false and two is true, then you get true. If they're both false, you get false. But if they're both true, this is where it's different. If they're both true, you get false. So it, it's exclusive, meaning that only one has to be true, not both. 
The dot operator is a unary operator. The others are binary, meaning they require two operands, by as in bicycle, unary, un, uni as in unicycle. Um, the not operator takes one Boolean expression and reverses its logical value. So if not in temperature greater than 100, so if in temperature is 120, that's true, but the not makes it false. And there's the truth table, very simple. The um, AND operator is very useful for checking uh, to see if a value falls within a range of numbers. So if you want to see if a value, int x, is greater than or equal to 20 and less than or equal to 40, there's the code. If in x greater than or equal to 20 and in x less than or equal to 40. So the range of values from 20 to 40, notice greater than or equal to. So that includes the boundary points, 20 and 40. If that were greater than 20 and less than 40, it would not include 20 and 40. It would include 21 to 39. Okay. The OR operator is best for checking if a value is outside a range of numbers. So if int x is less than 20 or int x is greater than 40, then there you go. Logical operators have an order of precedence, just as arithmetic operators do. And this is the official order from highest precedence to lowest, not and or XOR. But as with arithmetic operations, you can use parentheses to trump the order of precedence. And that's what I do because I could never remember that order of precedence. I just use parentheses and don't worry about it. So, but your mileage may vary, whatever you want to do. If you want to memorize those and not use parentheses, all the power to you. Here's uh, two examples, actually one example stated two different ways that um, demonstrates the the uh, order of precedence for logical operators. Um, in the example, the first example, if x less than zero and y greater than zero or z equals zero, if, I'm sorry, x less than zero and y greater than zero is first evaluated and resolved to true or false, okay? If that is true, then we evaluate um, z equal to 50. Okay, or if you want the or if you want the or condition, <laughs> alternately, if you wanted the or condition to be evaluated first, you just use parentheses, like I mentioned earlier. I'm beating a dead horse here, sorry. Uh, this is the last slide for the first lecture of two for chapter four, and it shows uh, how math, relational, and logical operators are evaluated. So coming into this, if x greater than a times 10 and y less than b plus 20, um, and there are indicated values for a, b, x, and y, you evaluate the math operators first. So a times 10, a is 5. So if x greater than 50 and y less than uh, 7 plus 20, 27, okay? Um, and then uh, if, let me see, x is 100, true, 100 is greater than 50, and y, 30, is less than 27, that's false, okay? So if true and false, the compound operators leaves false, so the entire um, true statement is skipped for this if statement. Um, Obviously, parentheses makes the order of operations much clearer, but like I said in the previous slide, I'm beating a dead horse there. I'm a fan of parentheses, and I would have started out with what you have at the very end because I just don't like to have to remember uh, simple rules that I may get incorrect. So, hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you have any questions on any of these materials, you know how to reach me. Thanks.